So how many products do you need to get started with Shopify dropshipping? For those of you guys that don't know me, my name is Juan Valdez, and if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Join the VFAM. The VFAM is a community and a movement of people that are aspiring to do a lot more than what society has out for us to do. I get tons of questions on Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, email, you know, you name it. And one question that I do you know, get asked frequently, you know, for beginners is, you know, how many products you need to get started? This is actually a topic where I, at first, I didn't really understand, you know, how to go about it or, you know, how many products you actually need to get started. But as I obviously, as time started to go on, we started testing different stores, different niches, things like that. You know, you don't need a ton of products for your Shopify store, right? You want to eliminate as many things as possible that keep you back from getting the ball rolling, right? If you just, for some reason, find out, or you decide that you need, let's say 12 or 20 products to, you know, kind of get the ball rolling in your store, that's going to delay your process a little bit because now you need to know, now you know that, you know, you have to do product research for 12 to 20 products. Rather, if you did product research for less products, you know, you'd be able to get started a lot sooner. When it comes down to it, you want to have the right resources so that you can actually start, you know, your store um, as soon as possible. You want to delay, you don't want to delay it. And obviously, you know, doing more product research, finding more products, things like that can also delay it. So, you know, just to kind of cut right to the chase, you don't need as many products to actually get started with your store. When customers come on your store, if they see too, too many product options, like they see products everywhere, all over the place, everywhere they go, they have too many options. What happens is we as humans get what's called analysis over paralysis. If you guys ever thought about any time where, you know, for me personally, you know, whenever I'm shopping online, and I go to websites like, you know, like Amazon. Obviously, they're a great website, great, one of the biggest companies in the world. And usually when I go, I already know what I want. Any times that I go on there and I don't know what I want, I kind of end up just going all over the place and just adding things to my cart, adding things to my cart. And don't end up checking out at the moment of, I end up leaving it for another time. I might end up getting some things at the moment, but I don't end up checking out the time. And one of the reasons why that happens is because when we see so many options, you know, it's, it's a lot harder for us just to decide on one thing to get. So you want to start off real simple, right? You want to have a basis amount of products. It doesn't have to be anything too crazy, just enough for you to launch your store and start getting things going. Obviously, later on, you can always add more products so you don't have to worry about, you know, when first getting started, like not having enough because you can always add more. Again, you want to make it very easy for, you know, your customers to make a decision. So you don't want to have too many options, depending on obviously if you have a general store or a niche store you know, will depend a little bit on how many products you should start with. Based on my experience, a decent amount of products you want to have in your store is anywhere from six to eight products. Usually six to eight is a good amount for you to get started. You don't have to overload your store to kind of get started. A general store, obviously you're going to be testing a lot more and you'll probably have a little bit on the higher side, maybe like eight or more products or so around that range, just because obviously you have a lot more options and you're obviously going to be testing a lot more products rather than just, you know, testing within a niche. You know, they're both great options to start with. You want to make sure you're staying around on that range though because any more again it's going to delay how long it takes you to get started and also it's going to potentially put your store at risk of having customers come in and get paralysis over analysis those products usually what you want to do is you want to find what's called complementary products and what i mean by that is products that basically when the customer comes in again we'll use a golf example if they come in for a golf club you know you can also have maybe like a golf club case, you know, or maybe a golf club shiner. I don't know if these things exist. Don't get me, you know, don't quote me on that because I'm not a golf guy. I'm actually, I tried golfing once, but I was not the best. You know, you have either these golf club cleaners or these golf club cases available for them, right? Amazon usually does this all the time. Like if you go to their website, they always have options where, Pluto, you want to say hi? Come here, boy. Come here. All right, everyone, here's Pluto. Oh, 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 okay, okay, never mind. I'll see what's going on here. The reason why you want to make sure you have those complimentary products is again, if somebody comes in, they come in and they get a golf club, you know, they see a golf club case and a golf club, let's say cleaner, they might be more likely to, you know, want to buy those products if they're already coming in to get a golf club and you have it available than if you didn't have it available. So usually what you want to do is you want to make sure that you know, in case a customer would want to buy that product, you're prepared for it and you have those products that are available in case they actually want that golf club cleaner and against they want the golf club case, you actually have that available. It's much better you prepared than not prepared, right? It says, there's a famous quote that says, fail to prepare, prepare to fail, right? So you want to make sure you're, you're ready in case people do come in because if people are shopping online, you got to think about it just like yourself. When you go to buy one thing, you know, like just the other day, I went to buy some things on Amazon, some, some household goods. I went and bought one thing, then I just thought about something else I needed that went along with that product and then something else that I needed. And I ended up leaving with 
uh, not only the product that I went there to get, but some other, you know, also some household accessories. You want to make sure that when you're setting up your store, you are, you know, sticking to that range of, you know, six to eight products or so. You can kind of test it. You want to stick to that range and also, you know, make sure you are keeping in mind the products you're adding. A majority of the products that's going to be in the store are probably going to be very close or similar to the ones that, you know, to each other. If you have a general store, you know, if you, you're probably usually going to have like one or two products that you're going to start driving traffic to. So you want to make sure you have at least some type of complimentary products to those. You know, this isn't supposed to be like any complicated video. I just wanted to really record this one. It's going to be a short one. And something that I learned from one of my mentors, you know, you want to have the main focus on your, of your store on, you know, some core products. You don't want people coming in and losing their focus going to see other products and coming to see this. You want people coming in, you know, realizing that these are the main products you have to offer and your store is kind of built around it. And then again, having different offers for them related to that product, what we call a complimentary product. So again, I hope you guys got value from this video. If you did, make sure you, hit, you leave a thumbs up. Also, leave me some feedback, leave a comment below. Let me know, you know, if you guys have tried it before, if you've tested, you know, starting a store with more products, if you've, if you've tested starting with a store with less products and how it's gone for you. And of course, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, join the VFAM, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.